Welcome back to Fullzor, and in this video, we will be talking about how do computers divide, the principles behind computer division, and we'll look at a small schematic of how to make the circuitry to make a computer division unit. Enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of Fullzor, and in this video, we are going to talk about how computers can divide, and then we're going to combine all the processes that we know how to do now, which is addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, and division. We're going to combine that into one arithmetic logic unit, into one super ALU. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Um, I do want to give a little side note, and I'm sorry if this makes some of y'all sad, but I might not post twice a week anymore because it's a little, it's a little demanding. Because now we're kind of in computer architecture where I don't even know how it works. So I got to research to make sure that I can make circuits that actually perform what they're supposed to do. And that takes a good amount of time. And plus I'm still in school. So I'm, I still got to study and do other stuff like that. But I might make some videos about um, some of the math behind computer systems. Since that's kind of what I'm studying in school. And I can like, I can study and make a YouTube video at the same time. So I might do some stuff like that, but that's enough right now. So let's get into the simulation and we're going to see exactly how to make a division unit. Welcome back to the simulation. And this is the, um, this is the uh, division unit. I couldn't think of it. I'm sorry. This is the division unit that I came up with. So <clears throat> you go on YouTube and you look up, a circuit for how computers divide. There are a few videos on there, but some of them are really hard to understand and to explain. So this is, I use a method very similar to what they said, but this is kind of my own variation of it. It might be right, might be the same one, but I'm not too sure. But anyway, so this is the uh, dividend and this is the divisor and these are the quotients. So zero divided by zero is infinity or I, I don't know I guess not a real number but all the LEDs light up anyway so kind of a little flaw but let's say 12 divided by 3 is 4 12 divided by 4 is 3 by 6 is 2 and 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 15 divided by 5 is 3 so Let's see, let's go at 9 divided by 3 is 3, and so on. So it works well. Um, an issue is if there is a remainder, it doesn't really display the remainder. I haven't got that circuitry to work yet. Um, but, I mean, it could still tell you the whole number of how many times it should go in. So, like, 8 divided by 3, we know it's at least 2 times. But we don't know that it's a remainder of 2. So a little flaw in the system, and it's only 4-bit numbers, which isn't a whole lot of division that we can do. But it's a start, and it just proves the point of how really computers can divide. And that's really what I want, what I want to learn, at least myself, and to be able to display it on this channel. But now we can take this division unit, and then we can go into our ultra... Uh, let, me, let me say this first. Now we can go to this ALU, which combines them all together. So all we have is a little multiplexer to control what output we want. And we can add, subtract, divide, and multiply now into one single ALU, which is pretty cool. But now let's go to the paper real quick so I can explain binary division. So let me explain this real quick. So if we just do normal division, and I'll have a few examples. But let's say we have 12 divided by 3. So in division, uh, is it focusing? Yeah, okay, so in t so uh, let's go with this first. So how many times can 3 go into 1? That's 0 times. So we put a 0 up right here. And then we carry the 1 down. Or actually we don't carry the 1. But we, now we go to the next number. 
How many times can three go into three? One time. So then we get, then we subtract the two, we get zero. And then how many times can three go into zero? Zero times. How many times can three go into zero? Zero times. And then we're out of place values. So the answer is four. So notice what we did. We have to compare the divisor to the dividend. And if it isn't greater than or equal to, we have to keep shifting place values. And then we subtract. And then we take the, um, what do you want me to say? I, I don't know. We take the answer from the subtraction and we have to carry it over and to the next place value digits. So work a few more examples out too. We'll go with 15 divided by five. So how many times can five go into one? Zero times. How many times can five go into two? Zero times. How many times can five go into um, seven? I said two, I meant to say three. But how many times can five go into seven? One time. So now we subtract. And then we carry the next one. How many times can five go into five? One time. And now we get zero. But we have to take the answer from our subtraction and then bring the next place value down. So notice what we're doing. We're comparing the numbers. Then we're either subtracting or we're shifting. And once we subtract, we pull down the next place value until we get to the end of the place values. So that's kind of all we're doing. We're compare, uh, and then if, I'll say if greater than or equal to, then we subtract. If not greater than or equal to, or whatever the sign is, I don't really know. Um, then we shift. And then we go back to compare. And then once we subtract, we pull down a place value. So that's kind of all we're doing, which is this little box right here. So not too complicated, but it's 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 a lot of steps at the same time especially to do it within one clock cycle so i don't want to use multiple clock cycles to keep repeatedly subtracting the number i want to do this all within one clock cycle so it, it has to do all this math instantly which is kind of complicated but it's possible because we did it and then let me see if there's another like weird case scenario we'll go at nine real quick because nine is a cool number so one zero zero one divided by three so how many times can three go into one? Zero. How many times can three go into two? Zero. How many times can three go into four? One time. And then we subtract. And that gives us one. We pull down this one, which is another one. And three can go into three perfectly one time. So that's all we're doing at the end of the day. And we either... Take so, so if you remember in our little um, divider, we have a multiplexer, and the multiplexer is used to do we get the answer of the subtraction number or do we have to pull down another place value? And that's what it's deciding. So, let's go back to the simulation now to really fully understand how this works. Okay, so now we are we're back in the simulation, so now let's let's really look at what's happening. So we're going to use the same examples that we used earlier. And we're going to start with the same one. So we had 12 divided by 4. So this is an 8-bit ALU. That's kind of all it is. And it's a little overkill for this circuit since it's only a 4-bit circuit. But uh, originally I did want to make this an 8-bit divider. But I realized that was kind of complicated. So I just want to simplify it. For the video and just for our understanding real quick but this is all it is is an 8-bit alu with addition subtraction capabilities but obviously since it's a divider all of these are in subtract mode with these little not gates right here so 
That's all this is. And then these are just little um, 1 bit to 8 bit um, dividing circuits. So, but I could have used the 4 bit ALU that we made in the other series. But I just want to clarify that real quick. So we're taking the 8th place value and we're putting that into the 1's place value of our ALU. Since we're just, we're trying to see and compare. So can 1 be divided by 3? And the answer is no. That's why this is not lit up at all. So this multiplexer is then going to um, I just shift this number over. And that's what we did right here. We shifted it over. And now we're getting the other uh, place value, the fourth place value. And now we're seeing, can 3 be divided by 3? Yes, it can. Or can 3 be subtracted from 3? Yes, it can. So we have the, this is on, and then the multiplexer is getting the um, answer to this little subtraction problem, which is 0. So nothing is lit up. And now we're carrying the next bit over, which is also 0. So um, is 0 greater than 3? No. So this is off, and then it's the exact same thing over here. Is 0 greater than 3? No, so we output nothing. Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, let's go with 15 divided by 5, which was our other example. So again, we compare the first number. 5 cannot be uh, subtracted from 1 perfectly. So this is off. And then we shift the next numbers over. 5 cannot be subtracted from 3. So this is off. Then we shift the next numbers over. But 5 can be subtracted from 7. So we subtract it, and then we take the answer, which 5 minus 7 is 2. So this multiplexer allows this answer to flow through to the next one. And then we get the last place value, which is this long wire right here. And it goes to um, this ALU to do the final subtraction, which 5 minus 5 is 0. And this can easily go on. So maybe if I make this a different color too, it might kind of help. I didn't really think of that. I'm not going to do violet. Violet's kind of... Hmm? So you can kind of see how they're all connected because we all got to carry them over. So I hope that they um, kind of fix some of the confusion. Maybe I'll do it the same thing right here real quick. Orange. Yellow. So if you want to um, pause the video right here and make the circuit yourself, you can. This is what it looks like. I'll go into the multiplexer real quick. The multiplexer looks like this. I'll go back out. And the ALU looks like this. With the full adder looking like this. The half adder looking like this. And so on. And the SR gates. Okay, so that should be everything for this. Um, that's going to be the end of this video, I guess, which is how do computers divide. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you for watching, and please come back later this week. I don't know what I'm going to post yet for more computer architecture content or more just science content in general, but thank you for watching.